in this lecture we will derive one dimensional heat equation to derive this let us consider a thin beam of heat conducting material oa place it along the positive x direction with one end of the rod coincides with the origin now with the assumption that the rod is insulated we are expecting the flow of heat only in the positive x direction now we are deriving this one dimensional heat equation to measure the temperature at a point x of the beam at a time t which is denoted by r which is given by theta of x comma t it is theta of x comma t is the temperature at a point x of the beam at a time t now let us consider a small element pq of the beam of length delta x such that op is equal to x and oq is equal to x plus delta x we know that the amount of heat contained in the element pq is proportional to its mass and temperature that is the heat h of t is directly proportional to mass m into temperature theta of x comma t since the density of the material is equal to mass per unit length we are expecting mass should be equal to rho into length that is delta x so h of t is equal to s rho delta x theta of x comma t where s is the proportionality constant and we call it as specific heat of the material so if h of t represents the amount of heat contained in the element pq then the rate of increase of heat in the element pq is given by dh by dt that is equal to s rho delta x do theta by do t we have this partial derivative because theta depends on two independent variables but further fourier law of heat conduction states that the rate of flow of heat at a point of the beam is proportional to the negative of the temperature gradient that is if i climb rate of flow of it is q that is directly proportional to minus the temperature gradient dou theta by dou x here the negative sign indicates as x increases here theta that is the temperature decreases so this expression implies q is equal to minus k dou theta by dou x where k is the thermal conductivity of the material further if q1 is the rate of flow of heat into the element pq through the point p then q1 is equal to minus k do theta by do x at p and if q2 is the rate of flow of heat out of the element pq at the point q so then q2 is nothing but minus k do theta by do x at the point capital q which means the difference between q1 and q2 gives the net the net heat flow into the element pq that is q1 minus q2 is equal to that is the net heat flow into the element pq is q1 minus q2 that is equal to substitute q1 and q2 in this minus into minus plus so take k common that gives do theta by do x at the point q the value of x is x plus delta x at the point p the value of x is x so that is why we we got do theta by do x of x plus delta x comma t minus do theta by do x of x comma t but according to the law of balance of energy we are expecting the rate of increase of heat in the element pq should be same as the net net heat flow into the element pq that is dh by dt is equal to q1 minus q2 substitute dh by dt q1 minus q2 in it divide through by s rho delta x okay now have a look at this expression this expression as delta x tends to zero because pq is a very small element this delta x is almost zero for us now if i take delta x is becoming zero so now this expression becomes do square theta by do x square 
Now, how do we get this one? First, let me try to understand that. If I assume do theta by do x is equal to f, so this represents f of x plus delta x comma t minus f of do theta by do x is f of x comma t divided by delta x. Now, as delta x tends to zero, so this expression becomes do f by do x by using first principle, first principle the first principle definition of uh, differentiation. So I am using that one to write this dou f by dou x. Since f equal to dou theta by dou x, so this becomes dou square theta by dou x square. Substitute that here. That is what we have. So that implies dou theta by dou t equal to c square dou square theta by dou x square. This represents one dimensional heat equation. Where c square is given by the constant k by s rho and this equation and solving this equation we can find the temperature at a point x of the beam at a time t here the three steps are very very important the first step is the amount of heat contained in the element pq is proportional to mass into temperature this helped us in getting this equation and the second one is Fourier law of heat conduction it helped us in finding q1 minus q2 the second expression and this according to the law of balance of energy. So this helps us in equating these two to have in our new equation. And through the mathematical operations, we are ended with the required one dimensional heat equation in this case. So I hope you people are comfortable with this. If you have any doubts, so please come back. Thank you all.